We've got an application started, but it is very hard to change to do anything with it. If I wanted something other than guitars, such as a light bulb or TV, I'd have to change the entire program. Swift Playgrounds and its bigger brother on the Mac, Xcode, have special programs called compilers and interpreters. These take our typed words and make them readable by the chips inside your iPad or Mac. Other languages use interpreters too, such as JavaScript in your web browser. Swift and most programming languages have a way for developers to tell that there is a name for a value. We call this a constant. In Swift, we assign it like this one. So I'm going to put one right here. So if you go right underneath content view here, I'm going to add let thing equal quote guitars. The let is a keyword, a special word that tells Swift that what follows is an assignment of a constant. Once you define an identifier, you can use it. For example, I can change the image to this, get rid of guitars, and put in thing. And you see it's still giving me my guitars. Now, I can't put a constant like thing directly into a string. So for example, I could go down here and put in thing and now it says hello thing, and that's not gonna work, but I can tell the compiler this is an a value with what's known as interpolation. And I use the interpolation characters, which is a backslash, and then putting my identifier in parentheses like this. And you see we now says hello guitars. Now when I change the value of thing, everything it uses, it changes. So let me go back up here and I'll select guitars, and let me just change that to TV and everything changes to TV. Or let's try that as light bulb. Everything changes to light bulbs. Now, I'm not limited to strings. Let me change thing here from a string to a number. Let's make it five. Okay. And I get an error. Let's take a look at that error. So I'm gonna tap on the X here and it gives me a big error that says, cannot convert value of type int to expected argument type string. This is the compiler whining that image doesn't understand integer numbers. It only understands strings. I can fix that with interpolation. So I can go back in here and put thing in parentheses. I'm going to put a quote, and I have to get rid of one quote to get it in, and then put the second quote. And now it says thing, and it just disappears. And now I'll put in the interpolation, and I'll encompass it like that. It now it works, but it's blank. The text shows correctly, though. Okay, we still got hello 5 there. There's no SF symbol for 5, so it's blank. But there is the number 0 through 50 with dot square or dot circle after it. So I can change my string here to say five dot square. So let's do that. So we'll do thing here, and then I'll just put in square after it. And now you can see we've got a five and a square. Once you start working with numbers, you can also start working with math. There are four operators you can use with numbers. The first is addition. So I can change this and add plus three and we get eight on our little hello pizza there. Now, subtraction is a minus sign, so I can just change this to a minus, and I get two. Now let's try division, and that's a sl forward slash, and I get one. The numbers we are using are integers, numbers without fractions, so the result is an integer value. But there's some left over from this one, and there are also a remainder operator, which sometimes people will use, and that's the percent sign. And that gives me that I have two left over for my division of one. That's the remainder. Okay. Now, if you really want a fractional value, by the way, you can just change one of these things to a fractional number. So I have a 5.0 here. We have that nice fractional value. You'll also notice we've lost our symbol there. There are only SF symbols for the integers 0 through 50, and because it doesn't exist, it's blank right now. So I'm going to go back here, and let's just get rid of the 5.0 here, and that should get us back to where we want to be. Yep, and there we go. We've got our integers again. 
Now, you're not limited to only one operator. I could change my math here to do this five times three plus one. And there we go, I get 16. But what if I do it this way? If I do five plus three times two, I get 11, which isn't exactly what I expected. We've got to worry a little bit about the precedence of these mathematical operators. The times here is going to go first before a plus and minus the same thing with division, where you'll get times and division will do first, and then you get plus and minus. So this is doing three times two, which is six, and then adding five. Now, once you have this identifier, you can also do math with it. So for example, I can go down here into a uh, system name and I could add or subtract a number from it. Let's make this 10. So I'm gonna do thing minus one. And you can see that my symbol now changes to 10. Now, I'm gonna try one more thing. You can use thing by as a number itself. So I can actually do that as well. So I could set up something like this. I can let thing two equal thing plus five, okay? Now, you'll notice you get an error message. And let's look at that error message, okay? Constant declarations must be in specific places. And I'm gonna discuss that why in a later video after we have a few more concepts down of what this error message really means. But for now, what it really means is when you start assigning things with identifiers, you have to be inside of here, okay? You can't be up here. So if I move this, and so I'm just gonna highlight it. I'll hit copy. And go back down here. I put it up here, and let's now get rid of this one. I get a different error message now. And this one's not so bad. It's telling me, A, this works, but I'm lonely. And it says, I don't have anybody helping me. I wanna play. All right, so how do we get rid of this error? First of all, I'm gonna hit the X here so that it's back to the small version of it. Then we go down here to thing, and I'm just gonna make this thing too, okay? And that gets rid of the error message. There it goes, it disappears. And we can see that it's now saying 16 for that. You've covered more basics of assignment and some of the math functions you can use with integers. Next time, I'm going to show you some more sophisticated stuff you can do with numbers and strings called functions.